Welcome back everyone, it is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. This video we are going to be doing the cool stuff of cluster control. <laughs> and this has to do with database automation and monitoring. So essentially, with cluster control, we can write these scripts that will run regularly to check things in our database. So when we open our cluster, we can find this scripting area by going to Manage and then Developer Studio. And here, there's going to be a bunch of scripts that are already built in. So for example, you can go to S9S, MySQL, and then uh, let's say Schema, for example. And then in here, one of them is schema check no pk and essentially what the script does is just make sure that your tables have a primary key this language here is called a domain specific language or sometimes it's shortened dsl and essentially what that means is it's a language that has absolutely no purpose or value outside of this application <laughs> which is kind of sad but it is very similar to JavaScript. You can see it even ends with a .js. So it's really not that confusing if you know anything about JavaScript. There's just a couple differences you can find online on the Several Nines website. There are basically two categories of scripts. Those that get ran on a schedule, which are called advisors, and those that you can run as needed. The ones that are ran as needed might just be used to simplify a complex process. Our goal is to do as few things by hand as possible, <laughs> so scripts are very good for us to use. So a little bit more on the advisors. You can click this little advisors button right here. That's going to list the advisors that we have set up. These are the ones that run regularly. And you can see there is a little pink box saying how often these are ran. So if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see the one that I'm talking about. Tables without primary key. This runs every 20 minutes and it runs this script, schema underscore check underscore no pk dot js. So that is what an advisor is. So to understand these scripts a little bit more, I want to go through a specific one and break it down. So let's close out of this. The specific script that I'm interested in is in this S9S folder, and then MySQL, and then what it is in is called programs. So open programs, and the one that I want to look at is change user password. This is a very simple script that you could start with to look through it, see how it works. The very first thing you should notice is this include. And this is actually referring to another file. If you open that location, common, there's this mysqlhelper.js. So we're just essentially taking this script right here and plopping it right here. <laughs> and what this script does is allows us to connect to our nodes. The way this script works is there's some variables up here in all caps, almost as if they're constants. And what you do is you just plug in a value here, and that's going to be used throughout the program. So it says here, change me. And then you're also going to put the user that that password applies to. This variable here is the command that's actually going to be ran. And then this function main, that is where the actual code starts running. So when you run this, it's going to start right here at line 11. This is just going to run line by line. So it's gonna look at this first line, do something, and then it's going to go here, do something, and so forth. Now, if you don't have any coding experience, that's okay. I'm gonna try and keep it simple. If you do have coding experience, I'm sorry if this is a little too simple, but gotta find a happy medium here. The very first thing, let's look at this var hosts equals cluster colon colon MySQL nodes parentheses. Well, anytime you see these parentheses like this, this is called a method or a function. This is essentially going to get all of our nodes in our cluster that are running MySQL. We can then loop over those and get information about each one, which is what this for loop is for. And essentially we're looping over them so we can change the password on all of the nodes, not just an individual node. If interested, there is also another thing you could use here, and that is cluster colon colon Galera nodes. And this is a little bit different. In our situation, this is going to work the same, but if you remember a while ago, I mentioned that Galera does synchronous replication. The Galera nodes is going to get all of the nodes that are a part of our Galera cluster, whereas this MySQL nodes is going to get all the nodes that have MySQL on them, even if they're not using synchronous replication. So kind of just getting into the details there, it doesn't really matter. In our situation, all of our nodes are using synchronous replication, so the thing is going to be the same either way. So we can just get rid of that. This for loop is used to go over each node. So this is going to loop around every single node. So for every node, this is going to be ran one time. 
And this is just a standard for loop. You can look up how to structure a for loop if you don't understand this. But essentially the value starts at zero and it's going to go until it reaches the host size, until it's one less than the host size essentially. The reason it's one less is because we're starting at zero. And then in here we can use these variables to get specific information about that host. So we are grabbing an individual host that's part of this host variable, because if you remember this host variable contains multiple hosts. Here is a way we can grab an individual node. And then we have these two lines, which honestly, I really don't know what those are doing. So <laughs> eh, we'll just skip over those. <laughs> Essentially though, this connected variable is going to have some value after this is ran. And it can either evaluate as true or false. If it evaluates as true, this if statement is going to be ran and everything inside of these curly braces will be hit. So if we are connected, what we want to do is we want to execute the SQL command and the SQL command is this one up here. And then if it's not successful, what we want to do is print the error and stop running our function. If it is successful, which that would be the else statement, that's what the little exclamation mark means, it's the opposite. So up here it's if it's not successful and down here it's if it is successful. What we want to do is we want to say the password for this user on this host name has been changed. And then once it loops through all of them and if they're all successful, it will return true. And then that can be used as an indicator as whether this thing worked or not. Now that you have a little bit of a better understanding of how writing scripts works, it's important to know how do you actually run these things? Well, that's what these commands are up here for. Compiling is going to check for any syntax errors, so making sure you didn't type anything incorrect. Compiling and running is what you're going to want to use to actually run the thing. Once you do that and you let's say you want to schedule it regularly, you can make it an advisor. If this particular part of the series has interested you, I'm going to refer you to two articles on the Several Nines website. So the first one is Cluster Control Developer Studio Write Your First Database Advisor. This is going to go through all the details of how you do that, and this one's a little bit more advanced so you can really learn more than this crappy video. <laughs> the other one, which might be a little bit more advanced than this one, is called creating your own advisors in JavaScript. So if you scroll through this, you can see all the information it talks about and so forth. And just so you know, it actually is not JavaScript. You can read it right here. <laughs> cluster control DSL, domain specific language, which allows you to extend the functionality of your cluster control platform. The DSL syntax is based on JavaScript, but it's not JavaScript. <laughs> it's very, very, very similar to JavaScript. And there is an article out there showing all of the differences. So yeah, guys, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you've liked what I've come up with so far in this series, please leave me a comment and we'll see if there is anything more I could possibly teach you guys. Also, be sure to bug several nines and be like, yo, Caleb Curry taught me about your stuff. You should help him out more, help him uh, get some more videos up, etc. <laughs> that way they can come to me and maybe we can work on some more videos together. I hope this series has really encouraged you to understand databases even more than you have already. And this is really great because this is going beyond just a database for a small website. We're talking really large websites or just applications that companies are using. So this is really cool. That is all I got for you guys today. So if you've enjoyed, please subscribe and I will see you in the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Really appreciate it.